examples coming from SUN. And uh, so, I am going to continue that in this lecture, but let me just quickly recap some things for you. So, uh, so one of the natural representations which we saw was S u n that we saw was the what we call the fundamental or the defining representation. So, that was how we actually it is kind of uh, that was how I originally defined uh, S u n in the early part of the course. You said I said take n by n matrices which satisfy uh, u u dagger equal to identity with determinant equal to. Okay, so, that was the definition. So, so, so we saw that uh, there is a n dimensional representation in rep, which we call the fundamental. Or we can even call it the defining representation, but fundamental is the more common usage. But we also saw that uh, the uh, SUN uh, for generic n other than n equal to 2 has another n dimensional representation, which is not equivalent to this, the complex conjugate of that. So, we also got n star or n bar. Okay. So, the idea was suppose you are given uh, a matrix M of G, which is an n by n matrix, this would be the realization of this would come through n star of g. Okay. The, so, when you look at S u n, uh, so there are these two representations and the key point is that there is a third representation, which is also very natural and this representation exists for any Lie group. Okay. So, we that is called the, so the, the one which I am going to discuss now is called the adjoint representation. The reason I did not discuss it last time is because it was part of your assignment and we have actually seen this in a way. Uh, if you rec uh, recall the Lie group SO 3, sorry the Lie algebra SO 3 rather than the Lie group. Okay. So, for that we had uh, written out, we saw that Hopefully, this minus i is correct. This is done from memory. So, t, so here this is a a equal to 1, 2, and 3, but even the matrix indices b and c actually are, are, <coughs> are also running over the same indices. So, in fact, more generally, what we will see. If you take T A b c to be minus i f a b c. Okay. Then, this condition T a T b equal to i f a b c T c. Okay. So, this is what this is the Lie algebra is uh, <coughs> is equivalent to the Jacobi identity. Okay, so, you start with T A B C. So, what you go ahead and so, what is the Jacobi identity? You write something like this. Okay, there are many ways of writing it. So, let me write it in one way plus two other perms cyclic firms permutations equal to 0. Okay. So, what you have to do here that you work out what that condition is that was your assignment and <coughs> you can see that if I put this in uh, you will start getting. Uh, so, let us first see what a term uh, what how this would look like this will give you one f a b c then there would be another uh, commutator which you have to evaluate. So, that gives you f a b c. So, this is like three terms which is f a of the form f f plus f f plus f f equal to 0, I am hiding all the index terms. Okay. But, if you put this out here and expand it out, this will give you two terms, this also because this is one of the f f terms. 
So, modulo all the i's it is really that same thing. Okay. So, it is kind of natural. You, so, you can see that I did not require any detail of the Lie algebra. Okay. So, this is called the adjoint representation and the, the dimension of the representation is the same as the dimension of the group of the Lie algebra. So, adjoint representation is equal to dimension of the Lie algebra. Okay, so, now we are, so what is the dimension of the Lie algebra S u n, how many generators does it have n square minus 1. So, this has dimension okay. So, if you put n equal to 2 we get n square which is 4 minus 1 which is 3 dimensional. So, it says that the S u 2 adjoint representation is 3 dimensional, but uh, we know the equivalence that uh, the of Lie algebras which says that S o 3 and S u 2 are the same Lie algebra. Again this was one thing which you checked in, in your assignment. So, you can see that uh, it agrees with this identification. Okay. So, S u 2 it is three dimensional for S u 3 it is eight dimensional. Okay. So, these numbers uh, just remember these numbers, these numbers will come back and uh, so of course, these are not the only representations we would like to construct all representations of S u n and that is what I am going to do, but it is important to remember that uh, these three exist. So, so, now the question is how about uh, other events. Okay. So, before I do that I should I, I need to introduce some notation. So, we will start with the fundamental representation. So, the idea the, the we will use something called the tensor method which is pretty much uh, what we did for S o n we discussed tensor methods uh, the tensor construction but uh, we will do that for sun and in a sense i think sun is simpler than son okay and you'll see why so what we will do is we'll start with the n dimensional representation and we'll construct the rest but uh, so i need to fix some notation so let's uh, uh, let's choose the n dimensional representation and so it acts uh, so that would consist of some vectors which i should i'll put uppercase let's be very Okay, so, this is some n dimensional. So, you think of it. Uh, so, the, uh, the Lie algebra and the Lie group act on this vector. Okay. And in short, I will write I will write something like V A. So this. No, no, I would not use A because I am using A for adjoint index. So, let us call it I. Okay. But now, the question is what should I uh, in this notation what should I use for n bar or n star. So, I need to do that. So, n star would be taking complex conjugate or whatever. So, n star or n bar I will indicate just by putting a bar on the i guy. Okay. You can take this to be equal to star of this if you want if you like. Okay. So, when we talked about vectors in R n the normal vectors n dimensional vectors in R n we defined an uh, we, we we saw that the unitary sorry the orthogonal group was the thing which preserved the norm we can define the unitary group also similarly as preserving a norm but the norm of the vector we, uh, we, we want it to be a real number if you these are uh, so and these vi belong to complex numbers now they don't need they are, if they are reals then the uh, v and v star would be the same okay uh, so we take them to be complex so, the norm of a vector V will be defined to be summation of 
Okay, so here Vj bar is actually defined to be Vi complex conjugate. Okay, that is just inherited from exactly this simple observation. Okay, no transpose, nothing. Okay, so so now you can see that, uh, and this is just the normal. Uh, so the I wrote the arbitrary metric out here, but really it's uh, uh, the natural one. The natural thing is to say that g one one bar equals to g two two bar equal to blah blah. All the other terms are zero. Okay, so now let's just do uh, uh, what we would have done. Uh, to raise and lower indices first, let us understand how to raise and lower indices and that is usually done by using this metric. Okay. I could write this as delta i j bar, but uh, just to show you that I mean to remind you that the indices are not the same that is why I am using a g. Okay. So, and you I want you to remember the index structure one of them is an n index and the other is a n star kind of index. Okay. So, obviously, we can define the inverse. it will also have one upper and one lower. By the way, ah, I also g 1 bar 1 equal to g 2 bar 2 equal to whatever equal to g n bar n. I mean, I can, okay. so, so if you think of this, so if you think of uh, this object as having 2 n the things, n and n bars put together. So, this metric is actually off diagonal. If you write this, because it takes i and it can take values which go from 1 to n and 1 to n bar. So, it is 2 n values, and uh, so if you think of this as a matrix with 2 n values, then uh, it is off diagonal. This matrix. So, what I mean by that is you, it is something like this. acting on something like this right. So, this has to sum with v, uh, the way I have written it uh, is okay. something like this. Okay. So, the inverse metric is this guy and uh, which has the same proper it is just because it is an identity you can see it is the same kind of thing. So, so now the thing is that uh, what I what I want because the off diagonal nature is important I could use this and write a lower index. Okay. So, question to you is what would be an object if I lowered this you can see that I can only get something like this. So, like an upper uh, n index is equivalent to a lower n bar index and vice versa because there is no way you can get an i index this down. These are mnemonics, but useful and important. Similarly, you can see v i bar can only be lowered with this. So, let me just call this for fun w j bar plus 2. Okay. So, in particular uh, suppose, uh, so uh, yeah, so let us think of how we will, how, how did we go about constructing vector tensors. So, the idea was we just wrote something which had a bunch of vector indices. Okay. So, here when we say vector we will just define it to be uh, the n index not the n bar. Okay. So, we will write something which has uh, uh, many of those indices and each of those will transform in the uh, as if it is in the fundamental. Okay. And, uh, but uh, if you remember we are able to do traces in the S O n case now we cannot do traces because you can only trace uh, uh, a pair of indices such that one is in n and one is in n bar because you need to use this metric. Okay. So, there will be no traces. So, that is the simplification. So, let us see how we would so let us write the transformations. the n and n bar of s u n just to fix notation. So, that would be just v prime i should be u i j okay, 
v i and v prime i bar will be u star i bar j bar v bar okay where now i have just instead of calling it m or something i'm just writing u and this thing of course where u is such that u u dagger so this is going back to our earlier definition but only now we have i have also written independently an i bar how it transforms just for completeness okay so let's define a tensor Which one? This one? Uh, yes, it should be V. Anything else? Okay. So you define a tensor of rank n or whatever. So put a prime by its transformation property I1 to I n is equal to so P J1 to J n. So the rule is that for you uh, you focus on every vector index separately and just write a u for that. So, first i 1 right u i 1 j 1 u i 2 j 2 so on so forth up to the last fellow which is i n j n. Uh, Let us call it m because n is used up. Okay, so, this is the this is exactly like we did uh, for uh, Orth uh, vectors of the orth orthogonal group, except here we use the orthogonal matrices. So, in that sense, it is exactly that. So, again, even there we remembered it was not, but uh, th that it was reducible. Okay, so, so, the idea is to ask what are the irreducible components of this. So, you break it up into the blocks like we did in the orthogonal case. So, what we will do is I will work out explicitly for, for a second rank case and then we will generalize. Uh, you might ask me I could have defined things using I bar, I could have defined mixed tensors. Okay. The, the reason is that I do not need to define mixed tensors because what we will see is that this construction here will get you even the n bar representation. Okay. So, I, in other words I do not need to do a double duty, I can always find uh, find all the any object which is mixed as some, layer, uh, as some higher rank tensor with some property uh, irreducible component of something. Okay. So, let us choose a second rank example. So, I am very loose here when I call second rank or mth rank, I just mean the number of vector indices that it carries. Okay. Quite often people when they say second rank tensor, they mean really something like an irreducible component of that etcetera. Okay. So, let us uh, let us not get worry about that. So, look at this i 1 i 2 is equal to u So, we can uh, we what we can do here is we can break this up into a symmetric and an anti symmetric part. Okay. So, this is consists of a symmetric and an anti symmetric part. Okay. And these are irre irreducible. I will not prove these things, but I'll just claim. So claim is these two are irreducible representations of dimension n into n plus one by two. This is the symmetric guy, and the other one is. So, for fun let us just go ahead put 3, what we get here is 3 into 4 by 2 which is 6 dimensional representation and uh, out here uh, 3 into 3 by 2 which is 3 dimensional representation. Okay. So, so now the question to ask is so when I, yeah, so when we do when n equal to 3 
Okay. N equal to 2, I leave it as a fun exercise for you, because you know lots of lots of things about SU 2. So, for n equal to 3, this becomes 6 and this becomes a 3, but now question is, is it a 3 or is it a 3 bar. Okay. So, that uh, we do not know the answer. Okay. So, I have to give you the answer, you find that this is actually a 3 star or a 3 bar. Okay. So, now the thing is if you have uh, what about what happens if you have a third rank tensor, we have to decompose it into irreducible parts and uh, so this where the uh, pictorial approach is much easier at least for some things I will show I mean the general thing is hard in any case, but there are some things which become easy. So, what I will do here is use pictures and we can those pictures generalize. Okay. So, use a pictorial way. Okay. This uh, this pictorial way has a name, uh, it is called the Young Tableau. And so, the, the idea here is let us call, let us represent the n bar, the n dimensional representation by a box. Okay. So, now, uh, <coughs> what we are doing here in the second in this thing is taking two box representations and we are tensoring them. So, the mathematical symbol is this, but physically what is going on is out here is basically this what I am writing this object actually represents this guy. Okay. Now, is where I need to introduce extra notation. So, I will write something. Uh, so, the symmetric guy I will write it in this fashion. I am putting two boxes together and the rule is if there are two things like this you symmetrize them if they are horizontal attached okay. and if they are vertical okay, you have to anti symmetrize. Okay. So, here you symmetrize So, now the thing is uh, now what I am going to do is try to understand what is it we have to do for the third uh, uh, for uh, the rank 3 tensor and so I will be all these things will be a bunch of rules which I will put in, but actually there is a nice formal way of doing it, but uh, that will take me a few lectures. So, that is not relevant the rules are easier to remember okay. and I will not do the most complicated things. I will do the sort of things which you will run across on a regular basis. Okay. So, so now the thing is to naturally ask what about the third rank tensor. Okay, so, you can start something like this. I am putting a bracket, the bracket could be put here, it could be put here, it is not that is not so important. So, this we have already worked out. Okay. So, so now the thing is that uh, one thing you should realize is that these symbols have uh, I mean uh, some nice meaning. Okay. So, here uh, it is exactly like uh, addition and uh, multiplication. So, something like this can be written as what is this called the distributive law right. You, it holds even for this easy to prove. Huh? 
oh that should be tensor. Okay. So, so far I have done nothing, all I have done is use this. So, now we the question here is how do we compute given an existing diagram, how do we compute this. Okay. So, what I will do now is to uh, define something called a Ferrer's diagram, okay, which will become a young tableau once you put some indices into that. So, so these guys without these are all examples of boxes just put together, okay. they are called uh, Ferrer's diagram. So, let us define one. By the way, there are there are several inequivalent ways uh, of uh, of drawing uh, not inequivalent equivalent ways rather of drawing the Ferrer's diagram. It depends on which part of the world you you studied. If you studied in England, I guess uh, you would call it Ferrer's diagram and draw it in a particular way. If in France, it's another way. I don't know how it is in other. Definitely, I know that the English and French. So there is some rotation of how they draw it. I will draw it in one particular way. I don't care which where it comes from. Okay. So the idea is that you have a bunch of uh, rows, so let us uh, boxes arranged in some rows, just drawing some boxes okay. and the rule is the following, the, the number of columns or uh, number of boxes in any upper row should be such uh, should always be greater than or equal to the one below, okay, so on and so forth, but that is a very intuitive way of doing this is to turn this around draw it something like this and this is like a children's game okay so uh, gravity acts this way and you want uh, stable configurations under small jiggling okay so suppose i i mean let's say i had something like this i have put four such guys this is quite stable but suppose i do something like this this is not stable Okay, because if you jiggle it a bit, it will fall down here, or if I put it here, etc. Okay, so you can, you can see that uh, the rule which I am telling you out here is actually the best way to think of the rule is to understand it this way. So now this involves taking this and rotating it by whatever number of degrees, plus some 45 will there be some 45 out somewhere. So this is one way of understanding this. Okay, so so a Ferrer's diagram can be written by okay, first row has R1 boxes, second row has R2 boxes, third row is R3 boxes, R4. So, strictly such that R1 is uh, greater than or equal to R2 is greater than or equal to R3 greater than or equal to R4. In fact, you can keep going to infinity, it hits 0 at some point. Okay. So, this is what is the Ferrer's diagram. So, you can see that this is a Ferrer's diagram with R1 equal to 2. So, this one we will write it as 2. So, what you do is you represent this by R1, R2. R 3 so on and so forth. Okay. So, as yet this has nothing to do with uh, uh, these pictures, but at least it looks like those. Okay. So, so this in this notation will be just a 2, this would be 1 1. Okay. So, now you just so uh, first step I first thing I am going to tell you is construct all possible fairs. So, here I have just I am given this guy. I the, the rule I uh, I just I'm I'm playing this game I'm given this I'm asked uh, what are the things I can add to this okay add one more block so it becomes a children's game so the now I can do this and then I will explain what it means so here I can put this one here okay that is one piece one term this can come here but it cannot come here because then it will leave a gap here it will okay that is the first one. The second one I can put it here or I can put it here. Okay. So, and that is it there are no more. So, these rules of uh, Ferrer diagram are important in telling you what are the possible these things. Obviously, if you you can even do tensor of this with this, then the rules become more complicated. But uh, since I my goal is to uh, you know sort of incrementally construct things, the more only complicated only thing which I need to do is to see how to add this, and it is corresponds to this simple rule. 
Okay. So, now we have to understand uh, what the rule is to understand uh, the, what tensors these correspond to each one of these guys, which I will explain to you. Okay. And you see here that these two have the same structure. So, and the rules I will give will be incomplete in the sense I am not going to worry about details, I will just so that we can understand the structure, you can look it up in any book or whatever. And yeah, so let us let us first understand this, what is this. Okay. So, this is natural generalization of this, here what did we say, if you have two of them you symmetrize, this is fully symmetric in three indices. Okay, so, we will make it a young tableau, which corresponds to saying that it has this index structure. Okay, you completely symmetrize it. Okay. Can someone tell me what would be the dimension of something like this? Okay, this is an easy one, you can remember this, it is n. So, next one is n plus 1. Okay. So, it is it's like the, uh, the n choose 3, but goes the opposite way, where it, it keeps increasing. Okay. So, in fact, if you have something like this m boxes, this will have dimension n into n plus 1 dot 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 plus times n plus m minus 1 divided by m factor. You can prove this. Okay, this is a formula worth memorizing. Okay. Another easy guy is this. What, what do you think this should be? Totally anti symmetric. Okay. So, and uh, how, what should be the dimension of this? N C 3, N choose 3. Okay. So, let us uh, let us ask what happens if you put n equal to 3. It is 1. Okay. And what is the one dimensional representation? That means it is trivial. Okay, so, you see some nice rule now that first thing is uh, if you have S u 3, you there is no way you can have 4 boxes in a, this thing, because you have anti symmetrize uh, there are only 3 possible indices, the maximum you could reach is 3. Further, this is equal, so, so this is equal to dot, we will use a dot for uh, trivial representation for S u 3. Yeah, it cannot exceed the number of uh, columns or I mean the size of a column can never exceed 3, in fact 2 because of this simplification, there is no need to exceed 2 for n equal to 3. Okay. More generally if you come here for S u n, you will find that you, you, you can never have more than n minus 1, uh, uh, what do you call, you can always reduce it to something which has uh, n minus 1, is n minus 1 correct? Yeah, n minus 1 uh, uh, rows. Okay. Very good. So, by the way, here also what you should do is you should say this is I one, I two, I three. I have not put those things in and then you start writing. So, when here this became I one, I two and I one, I two came here, you work those things you write them out. So, you should keep track of indices, but I, I am hiding that. Okay. So, then you will see a difference between these two, when you when you convert Ferrer's diagram to a young tableau. So, young tableau is this is an example of a young tableau now, 
I have put entries into that. Okay. So, so, so now the thing is I need to understand some what this means. Obviously, it is mixed. If you go this way, it is symmetric. If you go this way, it is anti-symmetric. But now we also need to have a rule as to how we write such a tensor. Okay. So, do you first anti-symmetrize or do you first uh, symmetrize? So, the rule uh, we'll do is, so let's take something like this. Take i j n k. It says so. What you should do is to first symmetrize with respect to this i j k. So suppose you are given a tensor which has no symmetry properties. I'm picking out this thing. So what I have achieved here is taken care of. This next step is to anti-symmetrize i k. Okay. So I just do that by. So, this is what I mean by this tensor. Okay. I will leave it to you as an exercise to check that you get something different if you anti symmetrize first and symmetrize, you do not have to get the same. Okay. So, this is the convention, this is what I mean. Okay. So, so now the thing is let us uh, let us go and do some dimension counting. Okay. So, we know how these things break up, we can we know the dimensions of this, we know the dimensions of this, we got lucky these two are the same whatever happens they because of their symmetry structure these two have to have the same dimension. So, we will do just some simple jugglery and get the answer. So, first thing is each of these is n and n. So, the dimension left hand side is n cubed. So, n cubed equal to dimension of uh, this fellow uh, the symmetric third rank guy that is just n into n plus 1 into n plus 2 by 6 plus 2 times dimension of this fellow plus uh, dimension of the anti symmetric guy which we again know okay you can simplify things and write for arbitrary n i'll give you a formula later but right now what i want to do is to just work this out for n equal to 3 okay so what happens for n equal to 3 we get 27 equal to uh, what was this 3 into 4 into 5 10 so this is a 10 dimensional representation plus 2 times dimension of this and this becomes it's 1 is it Okay. So, okay. so, so you can see that this is what is this representation? This is the adjoint. Okay. So, you can see that you know slowly working through you are able to get formulae for various representations and so on and so forth. But the reason I pushed it to this end because I want to get the adjoint. Okay. I need to get the adjoint and uh, but of course, this is not the adjoint for uh, if you take n equal to 4 it is not the adjoint you will get some other number. Okay. We will see in a short while how to get the adjoint. So, we will do another exercise we will start with uh, So, now we know some uh, nice things, we know the following thing n is represented by a box, n bar is represented by this n minus 1 boxes. Okay. So, now what I want to do is to do this. Okay. And now I want you to tell me what. Uh, so let me draw it in these pictures. So this is okay. This n minus one boxes. I won't write it again. So 
So, according to our rules for the Fourier diagrams, what are the Fourier diagrams we could write? Okay, we could put one out here. Okay, but that is how many boxes? Huh? N boxes, so that we can shrink and write it as one, one dot. Plus, what is the next one? What is the other possibility? Putting it here. There's no other place. There is exactly only one thing. What is the dimension of this? Let's do the dimension formula. What is the dimension of left-hand side? N square. What is the dimension of this? One. So this is the adjoint. Okay. This is e nothing but the symbol for adjoint of SU one. Okay. So now I'll pictorially. I mean, I, with this, I can actually prove one more nice thing. What happens if we take complex conjugate of the left-hand side? N bar will become n. N will become n bar, but that is the same. What about the trivial representation? It's equal to its complex conjugate. So this side is real. This side is real. So it tells you that the adjoint and the complex conjugate of the adjoint are the same thing. Has to be. So it comes for free. The pictorial way of doing things. Okay, is this clear? So, so we can see that adjoint of S U N is a real representation. Okay. We also saw something which was six dimensional, right? Where was that? Somewhere we saw a six. I have forgotten which one. For a S U three we saw a six, right? Anyway, I leave it as an exercise. You can check. I mean, for SU three, you will find that uh, yeah, it is just this, right? Uh, three into four by two, so it is. So six for SU three, for instance, six is 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 this we have seen, but six star is something else. Okay, I won't give you the answer. I will let you figure it out. What that should be. Okay, it's it's not easy, but not hard either. Okay. And in general, so you can use that. It clearly shows that there are pictorial ways of proving whether a representation is real or not. Of course, that assumes that this method is giving you a reducible representation, etc., etc. Okay, so so is this clear? So now the idea is now we need a formula for the dimension associated. course for we have to specify which s u n. Okay. I mean I you are not expected to derive it or anything, so I will just tell you. So so you so what you are doing done is you are given a Ferrer's diagram which has R1, R2, and since we are uh, at S U N, there will be only maximum number of rows will be n minus one. Okay. So just define from this define lambda one You can think of the next entry, I mean, as being zero. But yeah, I forgot to mention there's a one-to-one -one correspondence between Ferrer's diagrams and partitions of a number. Okay, so just a comment which I forgot. Given a number n or m, the number of Ferrer's diagrams with m boxes 
is equal to number of partitions of m. So, example will be let us take m equal to 3 partitions of 3 will be 3 2 plus 1 1 plus 1 plus 1. So, it has exactly 3 such things and with 3 boxes we have already seen those things. So, in all these things the easiest way is to construct explicitly the map. Okay, I leave it as an exercise to construct the map, it is a fun thing, it is very easy. Okay, you just have to stare at some few examples, you will get the map. Okay, so, this is just a random comment. So, coming back to this, I will give you a formula using lambda 1 to lambda n. So, let us So, I am instead of writing out the drawing the picture, uh, it is simpler, it is more economical to write this thing. I need to write the formula, and uh, this is one of the things which I do not memorize. But it is not very hard to memorize, by the way. Or three factorial by three. N minus one, three, n minus two plus lambda n minus one divided by three. Keep continuing till you hit the last guy, which is one. Is it one? <laughs> one plus, yeah. Huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there are other ways of. There's another way of writing it in terms of what is called hook lens and stuff like that. But I am just writing out one such formula just to tell you that there exists a formula given the Ferrer's diagram, given the group S u n and you can you can write this hands. Okay. It looks very messy, but for, for S u 3 it is not so messy. The hook length way is better for general n, for S u 3 you can see there are uh, there are only two things. So, for S u 3 dimension of r 1 r 2 is equal to just That is it, very compact. Okay. I mean, the reason to write this is uh, to at least so that uh, once in your lifetime you see something, a proper formula, and uh, as you can see, I had to look it up and not make any mistakes. But this kind of thing is very useful. Okay. So, so, this way you can see that the tensor method actually gives you way, uh, ways of constructing various representations. And you can see the, the simple way which I was doing, you are able to re reproduce lot of numbers, especially you uh, numbers such as 8 for SU 3, 8 and 10 appear in particle physics all the time. And I think we have seen both these numbers already. Okay. So, what I will do is in my next lecture, I say we will we'll actually do a hardcore particle physics application of this. Okay. And it will give you a physical way of you know, I wrote some arbitrary vector, but what we will do is we will replace them with quarks okay, and we will we will not call them v 1, v 2, v 3, we will call them u, d, s or whatever it is okay, and we will we will see that uh, how to organize what is called the particle zoo. Okay. And this was really the way uh, first I think non trivial application of uh, group theory uh, in, 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 in any area of physics. Even now, I, am, I think in condensed matter physics, I have not seen too many applications of non-abelian gauge groups. So, 
the maximum they seem to use is u 1, but in particle physics it is the norm. Okay. And so, it depends on what your interests are. I have also seen beautiful applications of group theory in areas such as quantum optics and things like that, where again people use non abelian groups, symmetries etcetera in a very, very beautiful manner. Okay. So, I am done for today. So, next lecture we will do applications. <laughs>